Welcome to the Staying Connected podcast, where we seek out stories that connect us with one another. We're here to learn about the differences, vulnerabilities, life lessons, successes that help us build and refine our relationships. I'm your host, Scott Wynn. Let's jump into it. So today I have another guest with me, um, Landon Suda, um, photography extraordinaire, um, and amongst other things, foodies. Um, how are you doing, Landon? Thank you for coming on. I don't know how to, I'm doing good. What's up? Awesome, awesome. Um, so we got connected through Steph. So if you're listening to Steph, thank you very much. Um, so I just wanted to start with asking you how you got into photography because on your website you mentioned uh, it started with just a hobby. So when did you, um, what got you into photography in the first place? And you know, when did you decide this, okay, this could be a business? Um, what got me to photography, honestly, um, cars did. Uh, my first real big hobby was um, actually like cars, like in the car scene, building cars, connecting with people there, um, going to meets and all that. And then one of the things that people do a lot, of course, is take photos of cars. So I was like, all right, why not? Well, I'll, I'll jump into that. And then and that's kind of really what sparked it and then moved on to um, landscape photography then it moved on to portraits and then most recently it moved on to food and commercial photography um but as in becoming a business now i was only but well, i got into photography in 2010 so it's, it's still fairly good, a new thing but yeah I see. Uh, is there a particular type that you like? Like, would you like just, do you still like taking pictures of like uh, recreational things or um, do you like doing commercials more? Has there been a shift? Like, is there a preferred type of photography that you like? Um, I mean, technically, actually, really, I, I shift a lot because um, I like to keep, I like new things. So um, I, I like doing a lot of different things. Yeah kind of keep me busy and it just my interest is my interest has always been super wide anyway so because i have a lot of interest in different areas i keep shifting to like okay, i've done this for a lot a while now let me do something different and i like kind of changing things i learn new things from everything that i do and i meet completely different people in different areas that i work with so it's kind of cool that i get to hear different stories um meet people that i would have never otherwise met photography and so uh, it, it's just kind of a also a way for me to connect with, with people and make friends from not all literally all over hawaii but honestly all over the world oh right on right on um so when someone does come to you with an idea how how do you take their idea and turn it because i know you mentioned on your website you're um using photos to tell a story so how, how do you um put everything together, you know, when, when let's say, uh, you can come up with an example or you don't mind, like a story or like someone comes up with you with an idea, how do you? Oh. Um, honestly, I just get to know them. I, I just talk story with them, find out who they are, what do they do, uh, how would they describe themselves or whatever they're trying to capture. I, I literally try to figure out what is the story that they want to tell. and. If they don't know a story, I'll find out a story from them. Like like I said, I'll find out who that person is, I actually get to know them, you know. And then from there you get a genuine story that comes out. And when you put a genuine story out in a photo that connects to that person, it, it feels real to everybody else. You know, and you get you feel you feel like you've shared a little bit of somebody with the world or whatever way that you put on social media. Is there been, um, do you have a favorite story that you'd like to share or any uh, particular recent um, projects that you worked on that really made like a lasting impact on you? Um, nothing in particular as of recently, but um, the best photo that I've always really had taken, I mean, was for Make-A-Wish. Um, so I've done a lot of wishes for them, um, going on wishes, capturing photos for the families and giving it to them and to document these moments and I mean you can't get any more real than that like the joy of like these kids that are going through a lot and the, these are the one thing that um, 
you know, it, it gives them hope, faith, and joy. And so kind of capturing that and seeing their really their, one of their dreams come true, it's, it's, it's cool. Awesome. So as far as your approach towards um, photography, like wh who did you learn from or what, did you just learn from scratch or was there any um, influencers or inspiration for like professional photographers? Um, not one in, in particular, but I've learned from a, a handful of people. Um, I learned from really everyone around me. Like, um, I think Sorry about that, Landy. I think the, the connection, um, it disconnected oh. for a bit. Oh, no, 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 no worries, no worries. Uh, where did you want me to leave off from? I, it's, it, uh, it left off at um, your, your, like, your inspiration or like any influences you got from... Uh, okay, oh, from the beginning. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, honestly, I can't pinpoint like a specific person because... Um, I take bits and pieces from like everyone that I meet. Um, a lot of photographers I met in passing, a lot of photographers that I, I can call great friends now. Um, other people from Instagram, like influencers, just every, everyone that I meet, like from client to client, like everyone that can give me a, you know, constructive criticism or like say what I'm doing good, whatever, you know. Um, I just learn a lot from just everybody and the main string that pulls through everything really is like what is the story that I would tell? And each story is different from person to person or business to business. Is there any particular lessons that you've learned that help really shape your uh, photography? Um to be honest, just just be friends with everybody. Um that's kind of just what I follow, you know, and you never know who you're gonna need. Um that's kind of been like, yeah, the biggest thing is like everyone that I meet, I, I talk to as if they're my friend. I interact with them as if they're my friend. You know, I, I treat everyone equally. And yeah, it's just, I, it's fun. It's just a fun way to like meet people. And it, it's, yeah, it's just a fun way to meet people from, because people come here to Hawaii from all around the world. And mm -hmm. honestly, if not for the business, I would have not, never met any of these people. Yeah, speaking about people, when I was going through your website, I saw Gabby, and funny enough, yeah. we used to be in the same um, business fraternity, and I was like, oh, that girl oh, looks sick. very familiar. Yeah, so uh, a, a short story about Gabby, because she's awesome. Um, when my class was going through that fraternity class we were pledging, everyone was kind of like mean to us, and they, they did a lot of hazing, but Gabby was one of the few that was just, just real genuine, real cool, and... I'm I'm real excited. She she is now a fashion blogger. If I'm not correct, is she working for your company? Oh no no no. Um, she's just actually a really good friend of mine, and um, we connected through fashion, um, photography. Um, she's helped me a lot during the business as well, like connecting to local businesses and kind of really building like a network within the local business community. But no, yeah, she's um she. She's doing good. I mean, she's pushing, she's fighting for her dreams and stuff right now too. And it's amazing. She's just one of my really good friends. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It sounds like Gabby, always helping other people. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's uh, transition a little bit to um, the foodie stuff. So I know you have your own YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, you still have yeah. your own Instagram as well. Um, and have you just been recently documenting your uh, food journey? I know it's only been a couple months from your last video. Yeah, it's only been a couple months that I've been really diving into the foodie stuff. I've, I mean, I've grown up around, so I, I, I know food. I've always enjoyed food since I was small. My family um, comes from like the food industry. You know, I have several chefs in my family. My dad's a personal chef. 
Uh, so like he, he from since the beginning, I've always kind of enjoyed all kinds of food and really like experiencing good food to home cooked meals and uh, all all that kind of stuff. So, but the reason why I did it, I saw local businesses going out of business during COVID. So. I knew I had a skill that I could contribute to possibly help them boost business to, you know, just to kind of help them stay afloat. So that's why I dove into the free scene. Wow. Yeah, my, uh, my last guest, I'm not sure if you met um, Kenny Kabunting. Like, I feel like all the food no. uh, people, like Steph knows them, uh, you know Chris, right? And Chris and yeah. Steph. Like, so they all, they, they all have the same idea of like just promoting, um, local businesses, helping them thrive, especially during COVID. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite restaurant on the island? Everyone asks that question, and particularly, you know, I don't, it really depends on the mood, because uh, I, I don't think any type of food is better than the next, because I feel every food that people cook kind of has its place, whether it be just like a simple home cooked meal to like this gourmet, really expensive, high-class meal. To me, um, both are really good, but both serves this purpose, you know? One is like, I want to be fancy, this is like innovative, you know? It, it's, it's like elevated, but then versus like the whole cooking is like, it makes you feel good. It's just, it could be just a simple like, egg, spam, sausage, you know, and rice. You know, it's not special about nothing fancy about it but it's something that you're comforted by it tastes good it makes you feel good so i really it kind of depends on my mood whether like which one because i mean yeah i mean i don't particularly have a specific meal or restaurant that i really like it really depends like what i'm feeling what, what are you feeling right now because uh, <laughs> um right now honestly i still want to like get like a nice breakfast at like this cafe over here that I'm at. So um, I mean Island Brew Hoi Kai is probably one of my absolute favorite cafes to come to. Hmm. I know what you mean about the moods. Uh, I've been craving comfort food. And have you been to Ray's yeah. Cafe? There, oh Kalihi. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So prime rib. Yeah, yeah. And like they have like great breakfast selections and it's it's super cheap. You can get four and under ten dollars easily. But anyways, yeah. the environment they have at Race Cafe is just so welcoming. When, when you come in, it's just like a nice uncle just greeting yeah. you and just like treating you like your family. And, and the food is just exceptional. You can tell it's made with love. So I understand what, yeah. you're, what you're saying. Yeah, that, that place you, is super good. And their, their prime rib is so cheap. Mm -hmm. What about Italian food? Like I know on the island, it's quite tough to find good Italian food. Yeah, yeah. Give a recommendation. I mean, I feel like the Italian food that's a, I guess that's the best a wide wide range of people. I feel a lot of locals can agree that Bravos is great because you get the free garlic bread balls. Right. And you eat as much as you want. And then also their food is actually pretty good too. So I mean I feel like that's like a good middle range that anyone can kind of go to. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. So with your um with, with food, like, do you want to start making like mukbang videos or would it just be strictly just um, promoting businesses? Um, I mean, it might kind of have a little bit of mukbang like integrated into it as we eat. We talk about the food and what we like and what we notice and all that kind of stuff. But mainly, I just I just want to kind of also, I get my thing is to giving food tours of Hawaii, um, and showing a lot of my favorite restaurants. Spots. And I just got like the local spots here, but also some of the touristy spots or new things that come up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I want to continue doing it because I, I always give like tours and food tours to all my friends that visit um, from the from mainland. But I just enjoy sharing my home with people. It's just fun. Oh, very nice. Did you uh, grow up on the island? Yeah, born and raised here in Hawaii. And I have to ask, because every Hawaii person needs to know, like, wh where did you go to school? Uh, I went to Roosevelt High School. Oh, Roosevelt. Oh. Yeah. What, what year? You, you don't mind me asking. I'm trying to find some. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, do I know any oh, nine? I don't, I don't think so. But, yeah, Roosevelt. <laughs> we, we've been there a lot of times. They have a great track and field. And 
that's, yeah. that's mostly all I know about Roosevelt. Um, how was it growing up for you? Was it any challenges, any anything that happened that helped shape your uh, your character or the way you live now? Um, I mean, I've probably been the most boring in high school, I'd, I'd say. I mean, I was a major band geek and I met um, a lot of amazing friends that I, I love, some of them I still talk to today. But I mean, even then, we, talk, we, we run into each other. It's, it's, you know, we, we pick up where we left off and they're all really amazing people. Um, but because of that, and I got to meet kids from all over the island, you know, all different high schools. I got to travel the world, literally. Um, I would, have, I would have went to, I would have never gone to Japan at that early that age. That age. Um, and I also would have never gone to Paris and London because I was in Banner, I was there. And then in middle school, I also got to go to Disneyland. So it's a lot for Banner. I would have not have traveled as much as I had during that time. So, and I feel like traveling also really opens your eyes for like people, even as like a young kid, like you kind of see the world, like how big it is, how big it is. May help you like aspire. You know? but I learned a lot of like discipline, what hard work man through band. It's just a lot of good life building skills. You gotta work through something. You need to work with people. You gotta you gotta, you gotta learn uh, like practice all that. Hmm. What what instrument did you play? I played trombone. Trombone. Oh, why trombone? Um, originally I didn't want to join band. I was forced to join band. Um, but <laughs> so I just felt one of those left over, so I picked it. But I ended up um, loving it after one year, and I kind of I really dove into it from eighth grade on. Yeah. Wait, let let's let's uh, rewind for a bit. Why why were you forced to join band? Um, my parents just wanted me to join band so I could get into. Running. I scored a GE, so that was mainly the reason why. Um, but I, at that time, I hated it, and now I definitely don't regret it. Um, mm -hmm. Probably one of the best experiences I've had. Yeah. Did you get Did you get a chance to go to UH and play for their? Um, was it? It's a symphony, I, right? Not just a band. Yeah. So I did for a couple years for the scholarship, but. Um, it was through high school the most that was really into it. I almost majored in music. Um, when I got into college, I decided not to. So I didn't take it as seriously when I went into college. Um, but high school was the time that I was really into it. Yeah. Hmm. So I just want to, I'm a little curious about more of the band thing. Like how, how long did you guys have to practice? Well, I was really, I mean, it depended on each person, but we had practices every week. Um, we had band class every week. But I, I on the side also took private lessons. I practiced after school, at lunch. Um, yeah, so I mean, I was, I, I was practicing a lot of things. And then at that time, you're, were you, did you, how did you find time to do photography? Or um, you didn't pick it up until after high school, right? I didn't pick up after high school. Uh, yeah, I was kind of, I was doing it here and there in high school. Um, it wasn't serious. It was just like a fun thing to do with my friends. Um, we we got into cars during that time. So once my friend got her, his license and stuff, we used to go up and do like drift videos. And I was the one that was making the videos. And stuff. So I, I guess the passion really started then, but I didn't get a professional camera or intro professional camera until 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I guess from 2007 to 2009, um, we're just kind of playing around with a regular point and shoot camera, making drift videos, and, you know, just, just messing around. Huh. The drift videos, I, I remember my friends making those. <laughs> um, yeah. I was looking through your Instagram and there's this one picture of the Subaru, um, the WRX STI. It was like, I yeah. believe on a pier and there was like sunset in the background. That's a beautiful picture. Oh, you know thank you, that. thank you. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That one's actually a legacy. That's um, my friend Nolan owns it. I know, I know it's what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Do you, do you have a favorite type of car? Um, 
I mean, my it depends what my range is. <laughs> it depends, yeah, I really like want to go budget or whatever. But I mean, my ideal dream car would be like a Mark IV Supra, but those are expensive. Supras are nice and they're so fast. Yeah, love those. I think back then, um, a lot of my friends they they um they drove a lot of Honda Civics and they would like they would spend thousands of dollars like just. Yeah. Fix up their cars, and are you that kind of person? To like just like yeah, yeah. Of- like I said, that was my first real expensive hobby. Really, it was um, building cars with my friends and going on cruises. Do. Sorry, Landy, it, it uh, disconnected a little bit again. I can, I can still hear hear you though. Um, the, just the video. Okay. okay. Oh, where did it? Um, where did it leave off? Um, I think it led off at um when I asked you about were you the type to like soup up your cars and put a lot of money into it. Yeah. That was that was my first room. Big, big hobby. Um, besides, I mean, I started with fishing, but uh, I, yeah, I, cars was like my first real big hobby from high school. It's still a little disconnecting. Um, yeah, the video is still lagging. You can still hear me, right? Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, since I, I do want to be um, respectful of your time, let's let's jump into some uh, questions. I have a whole bunch of questions for you. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no worries. Man. Okay. Uh, what advice do you have for someone that wants to get into photography or your industry in specific? Um, honestly, just shoot. Um, ask your friends, ask your family, um, just shoot anything. Don't think too much. Just it's you go in and shoot, you, you practice and find that one uh, photographer in the beginning that you really like, admire or like you like that style. Um, try and mimic it and then move on to the next and just keep doing that. That's really what I did. Just get started or you can follow Landon. <laughs> On uh, Instagram, and <laughs> or, you, or, you can follow me. or you can follow me. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Um, a t- what do you have a tip to help um, others connect? How how do you connect to people? Like, is, do you have a tip to help um, connect others to other people easier? Uh, you mean just like talking to people, meeting new people? Yeah, just making a connection. Um. Honestly, just be genuine. Show genuine interest in people. Actually, bother to want to know who they are and who they are as people. And just show genuine interest. And I feel like when you actually show genuine interest in people and people feel like you actually care, they're willing to open up to you and share with you. And also, you gotta be willing to share about yourself too. So if you're you know, if you're expecting someone else to open up to you, um, you got to also be able to open up to them and tell yourself about them. But it, it's a mutual exchange, you know, because people, regardless, you know, whatever they say, people want to get to know the people, know others. People want to be connected and, you know, they, they want to hear other stories. I love it. I, I love how um, everything about you seems to be like about stories and connection and yeah. No, you um, would you would you agree that photography is just about that? Just the stories you tell, the connection you have with people. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. 
Hundred percent. A photo or a good photo should really tell a story, express something. I agree. I love it. Okay. Um. So you have a PSA to uh, broadcast uh, any message to the world, and don't worry about um, uh, language barrier. Assuming everyone could understand it, what's your thirty-second PSA to the world? Mm, that's a hard question. Okay. Man. Uh, I mean, I guess it's still be around the same thing. Of what, how I connect with people? I mean, just really, just be genuine to people. Um, really connect with people. Hear their story. Tell your story because we all can really learn from each other. And I mean, yeah. I mean, I well, that just just show me to respect you. But I'm, I'm personally huge in respect to people. I do my best to respect others. I want them to respect me. Uh, yeah, just be genuine. I want to connect with people, learn. And, you know, human, it, 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 respect the human experience. You know, we all have something to share. I love it. Genuine curiosity for the other person. Yeah. Um, let's do one more question and then we'll wrap up. So, actually, this is a two part question. Who is the most successful person in your life and why? Honestly, I can't pinpoint anybody because I mean, every person I think, like, yeah, someone can we base success off of like who has the most money or who has the most assets or whatever. But um, I don't think that's really like success. I mean, like, yeah, there's things that I want with money and, and whatnot, but I feel like everybody has their different stages of success. Um, it could be in the beginning stage, but that doesn't mean that they're not successful at that time. They're, they're still building something. You know, I feel like they're, they succeeded at starting their business. They succeeded at conquering their fear to finally jump in. You know, I feel like they're truly successful because everybody's really um, is what inspired me. So like they're kind of fighting. Uh, sorry, Landon, it it disconnected again. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. We're we're back. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and then uh, a follow up to that is, what's the kindest thing anyone has ever done for you? Uh, honestly, all of the people, all my friends around me, that's really kind of taking me under their wing and like really promoted my business. Um, I, have to, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that during the pandemic, I didn't have a month where I didn't have a client. Maybe only had one client per month, but I know I have friends around me that literally had zero clients for months. But every month throughout the pandemic, I had one person. And, I was, and it wasn't because I was necessarily pushing on my Instagram here and there, I guess, but a lot of it really was like, oh, I had this person recommend you, or had my friend recommend you, and it was literally everything that I've gotten, was, it's all word of mouth, and it's because I have a huge network of people that are always pushing my business, believing in what I do, and seeing the steps that I can go, I might not be there now, but they know I can, they're willing to do whatever they can. The success of a business is not really, I mean, yes, I put in a lot of work, but if not for all of the work my friends and support me with it, I would not be where I'm at. I agree. It's the people around you and your team. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the end of it. Um, I just, again, I want to thank you so much, Landon, for taking time um, to come on the no, podcast. Um, hopefully we get to meet in person and then we can go get some food and just really connect and I, I would love to uh, do this in person and just uh, get to know more about you and yeah we real fun oh, yeah, talking for sure. about we can hit up Steph and um, Chris and we can all go do something for sure That's awesome. we, we all know the good spot so there we go if you need a hand model let me know I have great hands <laughs> you, might, you might need to get your nails done like Steph <laughs> yeah if you're waiting if you're waiting to do that we're good yeah, her nails are on yeah, point there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> awesome, awesome. 
Um, this is connected a little bit again. I'm just gonna wait till you come back and then. Uh, the connection is not too great. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Slowly oh, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though the connection was kind of laggy, we, we still didn't make we still made it work. Um, any um, last thoughts, parting thoughts before uh, we head out, Landon? He says I wanted to be connecting with people, being genuine, and wanting to get to know people, and um, sharing not only their stories but your stories as well and i mean that's probably the biggest takeaway that from the business whether it, you know it, it succeeds further down the line or it goes out or whatever um the major thing is like i've met so many people i've made lifelong friends i've made some of my best friends in the business so, i mean at, at this point i i call it a success you know i mean of course i want to take it further but um I, I would never regret jumping into this business and where I'm putting in the hours because I've I've made lifelong connections with this one. Awesome, awesome. And uh, again, um, thank you again for coming on. Um, please, if you're listening to this, you can follow Landon on uh, Genki Media. He has Genki Photos. His food block is Chewy Grinds with a Z. I'll have everything in the subscription uh, in the uh, description down low and yeah thank you everybody for listening and thank you Landon once again no problem at all thank you for having me on this is this is a lot of fun of course we'll do this again for sure for sure